This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Andre the Man in White, and Chad Welsh. Before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Karen Case to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. We really want to thank you for your support and your generosity. We also want to recognize Andrea Ramirez for switching her monthly pledge to an annual one. We really want to thank you for your continued support. And if you've been considering pledging over at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast, we have an incentive. If you'd like to pledge annually, you will get one month of bonus content and all the Patreon good stuff for free. In this episode, we're talking about the most exciting chapters in all of the Shadow Rising, chapters 39 and 40. Yeah, see, I think that you're being sarcastic about that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, okay, that's kind of fair. Like, not a whole lot of stuff. Like, some things happen. Some things happen. Chapter 39, we have a cup of wine. And chapter 40, we have Hunter of Trollocs. Yeah. So, like, stuff happens, but I'll admit, not necessarily... Not much. ...the best. (laughs) Not many things. Yeah. So, I mean, we can list them. We got some setup. Elaine gets shit-faced. Hilarious. And Perrin gets attacked by Trollocs. Yeah. So, like, there's setup. Stuff is about to happen. And just not yet. Now, it's, that's part of the pattern. <laughs> okay. That's this episode. Thanks for joining, guys. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Okay, so let's start us off with a fun fact. We'll okay. get into it. Okay, okay. This is actually a fun one because this is one that we meant to do Well, and I say we, but I meant to do way back when, but I didn't actually do any research. So this one is actually based on the help of one of our awesome Discord users, Ashandaru. And it's about the fun little smelly boxes of the sea folk. Ah, sniffer boxes. Yeah, the sniffer boxes. So apparently these are actually called sniff boxes or pomander. And it's based off from the French pomme d'ambre or apple of amber and it's a little ball made of perfumes. So apparently the pomander was worn or carried as protection against infection in times of pestilence or just useful for modifying bad smells. But the cases containing the pomander were hung from a neck chain or a belt and sometimes contained several different partitions where you could have lots of different perfumes in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also a cool another little tidbit, smaller versions of those also included things like finger rings or cape buttons or rosary beads. So kind of cool. They were based on something. So thank you for pointing that out. And we just haven't had a sea folk chapter for so long. And this one, they're like getting off the ship. So a little bit of sea folk. Okay, well, that's pretty exciting. I know that I've heard of them before. So yeah. Okay. It's just like when we first got introduced, I didn't know what they were, but right. they are based on something. So that's yes, cool. Yes, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. So last time we had Rand and that crew attacked by Trollocs in the waste, which is super weird. We also have them hanging out with some peddlers who are also super weird. Yeah. And either none of them or all of them are land fear. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> See, you're not you get it. I get it. We also got what is going on with some of the like behind the scenes in Tanchico. Yeah, side and off bit. perspectives from a bunch of like B characters. Right, which makes sense because now we are entering yeah. in Tanchico with Elaine and Nynaeve. Yeah. So chapter 39, we have a cup of wine. And in honor of Elaine, I have a great big wine glass full of wine. Yeah, and you're only going to drink one. I'm only going to drink one. One glass. But it's a pretty big one. <laughs> I got to say this chapter, like this, the scene with Elaine and Nynaeve is so funny. I love I like it so much. I like the scene with Elaine and Tom much better than the scene. That's also funny. Yeah. But it's like, because you had speculated about Elaine getting wine drunk at some point, just like randomly. Yeah. Someone had asked us who we'd like to do Gabe night with or something. Right. Yeah. And we we're talking about the different people we could play with. It was in a bonus episode. I yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah. Q&A or something. And I said, Elaine might be fun if she gets super wine drunk. I yeah. think I said that yeah. out loud. So now we get her. And I love it. I'm here for it. It is so fun. It's I'm good. I'm here for drunk Elaine. And then we got to talk about like the ways to get sober and how effective they are. 
or are not. Yeah, are not. We'll talk that. We'll talk about that later. Mostly are not. <laughs> so we get the harp picture because we get all the Tom stuff, and we enter in Elaine's point of view. The women have arrived in Tanchico, and this is definitely probably the raker that Egianin yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that how? I Most know? likely, yeah. the, the timeline lines up enough. I say yes. So the real purpose of the journey was revealed to Tom and Julian. Julian, Julian, two days ago. <laughs> Sandar. <laughs> yes, Sandar. And they aren't very impressed and don't think that these ladies are up to the task. Yeah, so it's kind of funny because they are uh, offended because they don't th- the, the guys don't think they're competent enough to be hunting the Black Aja. Yeah. So fair evaluation, not fair evaluation. Fair, but I don't know why Sandar is surprised by this because when he met them... Yeah. This is what they were doing. Yeah, but that was back in tier. Yeah, so but different. this is their, what they're doing. This is their mission. This is their job. <laughs> Maybe he was like hoping. I don't know. Like that, it's a bit of a question mark. Maybe he had some inklings, but. Yeah, I just don't think he should have been surprised. It should be blatantly obvious what they're doing. Yeah, that's fair. Anyway, so Nynaeve asks where the sea folk are going to be off to next. And they, turns out, are going to... A bunch of places to spread the word of the Coromor. Yeah, those are like the Sea Folk Islands because we get a bunch of them. A bunch of them. So okay. we can just kind of assume they're all the little Sea Folk Islands. Oh, okay. Which may or may not be good because we also know that the Sean Chen are over there. Yeah, Suroth. Yeah. She took over some of those islands or whatever. So right. And now that's not Tremalking? Yeah, so probably not Tremalking is probably not where Suroth is. Okay. That's a little bit too far south from what we could expect. Got it. But yeah. Got it. Okay. So Elaine has become closer to Joran during this voyage. Yes. Their farewell gesture is a very personal one. Yeah. Yeah. Little... And I mean, that's kind of important too, because she's the channeler one. Right. And so Elaine has learned a lot from her and she's taught Joran as well how to weave some fire. Yeah. So like trading secrets. And I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. That's fine. So Nynaeve did get seasick on this ship, but the sea folk had something for her to drink that stopped her from being sick about two days into the journey. So they get off the boat, they walk down the dock, the two men immediately bracket them when they're walking off the dock. There's a whole bunch of shifty people eyeing them up, and Elaine is thankful for these men here keeping them basically from being attacked. Yeah, and this is kind of an interesting perspective too because with Elaine and Nynaeve, you kind of get that train of thought where it's like, yeah, they could probably protect themselves or absolutely could protect themselves if they legitimately got attacked because they can channel. Well, Nynaeve only can half channel. Yeah, but it's like, I can, you could probably assume that she'd be able to get angry and defend herself. Like she's not helpless. Yeah. But the whole point is, if you use the power in the middle of a streak to fend off some like thugs, yes. you're immediately identifying yourself as an Aes Sedai. 100%. Yeah. So it's like. And then your cover is 100% blown. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you want the strong arm guys to protect you. Yeah. That's why it's helpful to have a warder sometimes. Got it. Right? Yeah. It makes sense. Yep. So as they're walking along, we hear a hey, hey, you. Hey, it's you. Hey, it do be you. It do be you. Yeah, favorite pirate captain. Oh, yeah. The it's return. the return of Bail Domin. Well, the re-return. The re-return of Bail Domin. So Nynaeve and Elaine recognize him from that, like, stint in Falma. He was supposed to help them get away, but they never made it to the ship. Yeah, he did do a good job, though. He apologizes for leaving them. Yeah. And then he sort of starts putting two and two together, and he's like, oh, my God, if you're here <laughs> that now... <means. laughs> Is what happened in Falma going to happen here? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and thought process. they say probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully but not. Never know. Right. So, he's going to help them find an inn to stay in. Yeah. He does feel he owes them a little bit for leaving. You know, and we saw his perspective way back when. And he did wait a long time. Yeah, he did. He, he did tried good. really hard. And they didn't even go to the ship. They didn't make it there. It's no, not like they, they got there and, and he, he was, was gone. gone. So No, all shit bro- broke loose. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tom and Domin definitely remember each other. Hundo. Which is so interesting and my favorite part. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And... But what's interesting is neither of them say anything. Yeah, I guess their only run-in was with Rand and Matt on the boat. Is on that... the boat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense that they wouldn't. Well, 
Domin knows that Tom was being chased by Trollocs. But also, he thought the Trollocs were chasing him back then. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then Gelb. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And the Gel- Gelb thing. Yeah, yeah. All of it. Anyway. And then Julian and Domin have a thing. Because oh, yeah, because from... Ilian versus Tyr. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they keep that animosity out of this because they clearly hate each other. Which we find out that they really don't. They don't. <laughs> it's bad. So turns out Domin has done quite well since Falma. He's got a dozen ships and four deep water vessels that are like off the books. And Elaine realizes that he definitely didn't do so well, honestly. Well, I mean, he's a smuggler. Yeah. Like he's, he's always been a smuggler. Yeah. And so Julian doesn't like anyone who breaks the law. Yeah. Especially <laughs> one from Ilian. Yeah. What can you expect from those Ilianers? Right. So with all of his hard earned smuggle money, Domin hires a <laughs> sedan and some guards for the group. Yeah. They're not saying no to this though, because Tanchico is definitely dangerous. It's kind of, this entire encounter with Domin is so funny because it's also totally coincidental. Yeah. Like they get here and the Domin is here immediately and helps him out in so many different ways and it only gets like thicker into the plot with Domin, so Yeah. And it's like coincidence that he's even here. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as they head to their inn, Elaine notes how dangerous Tanchico looks with people everywhere. And Elaine wants to know why their king isn't taking care of them. He's busy with other plans. Yeah. Right? Yes, he remember is. Remember from last time? I do remember that. Murdering the Panarch and such? Yes. Yeah. So this is another coastal city. Okay. That doesn't even remotely seem like a fun beach town. When am I going <laughs> to get my fun beach town? Yeah, I don't know if there's going to be any fun beach towns. Damn it. I really yeah. want one. I mean, Elian would be closest to like fun town party town i suppose but not really beachy yeah where are the beaches there's definitely no tanning in tan chico yeah <laughs> right so <laughs> i mean it's just the worst maybe some like uh, like the littler the, you have to go off into the countryside for mm, that maybe like the beach towns maybe yeah maybe know what i'm saying yeah so they make their way to the inn and it's called the three plum court yes and now We just took a short break because I had a question for you. You did. And you had to go back in your notes and look something up. I did. So that was a five minute intermission that people just missed. Yes. But you thought that in Falma, there was also an inn called the Three Plums. The Three Plums. Yeah. It was something I'd remembered. Yeah. Yeah. So I went back and looked and you are in fact correct. I love it. Because way back in The Great Hunt in chapter 43... There is an inn that had its sign painted over. Yeah. One of the words that was still showing the Watcher because they were doing the whole renaming thing because of the Shan Shan. And the new name was the Three Plum Blossoms. And that is where Nynaeve and Elaine met up with Domin. Captain Domin. Big callback. Here we go. Yeah, that cool. was awesome. Okay. Okay. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And you also just told me I have too good a memory, which yeah, I like, like that shot scarily good. It's yeah, really unfortunate. Yeah, because you stared at me blankly. It's like, I, don't I was remember. like, <laughs> I was like, have we heard the three plums before? That seems really familiar. And you just stared at me. It's like I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and, you, and you're like, do you need me to look that up? And I said, yes. Uh-huh, yes that's please. why there is. <laughs> I love yeah. that connection. That's so good. It is. It's a good one for sure, especially with the naive and Domin and all them and Elaine stuff. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's continue. Yeah. Because Because we get a funny little thing that Robert Jordan totally does on purpose. And he like laughs to himself as he's writing. Oh, yeah. Like in a mocking way. Yeah. So the (laughs) innkeeper has honey color braids and a rosebud mouth. Yeah. And the girls go. "Ah!" And then we go. "Ah!" And it's it's, Leandrin. It's Leandrin. She's the innkeeper here. (laughs) She's not the innkeeper. She's not. It's someone named Rendra. <laughs> yeah. Who knew that two people could have the same hairstyle? Honey color braids yeah. and rosebud mouth. Like uh-huh. it's just like Robert Jordan specifically at this point writing these books knows. Oh yeah. That people watch out for certain things. And for no other reason than to just fuck, fuck with, with you. us. <laughs> exactly. That's literally what's happening. Yeah. So good. Okay. So anyway, Domin knows this innkeeper. 
Rendra pretty well, and they get the last two rooms in her place. Yeah, so it's good to know people. Yeah, and so Nynaeve asks about how to help the poor people here, because she's like, I have quite a bit of gold, and I just want to be like, Nynaeve, no. This isn't the t- like, there's a time and a place to help people. Yeah. And it's not now by giving away all your gold. That you're going to need for yeah. your precarious black Aja hunting journey. Yeah, like you're going to need, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's tough. She yeah. wants to help. She, she wants, wants to, to help. help. So. We get word that Domin has a soup kitchen. Yeah, so it's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, he doesn't pay any taxes because he's a smuggler, right? I'd like to welcome you into my TED Talk. Okay. Bail Domin is Al Capone. Because okay. Al Capone, notorious gangster, was infamous for running soup kitchens during the Great Depression. Ooh. Yeah. So that was one of the big things is he literally fed like three meals a day to thousands of people, no question asked, in Chicago during the Great Depression. But Al Capone was a mobster. So it's like everyone knows, but he also did a lot of good things for the common people. Ah. Yeah. I didn't so, know So I mean, that. there's also, also a lot of theory behind that's a good thing to do. Because if you're a gangster or like Bail Dominus smuggler, yeah, and you're helping the common people, the common people aren't going to turn you in. Gotcha. Right? Well, so, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Hey, there they're go. less likely to. Less likely to. Yeah. Because Domin has also gotten Rendra to help, and she goes, "And I pay <laughs> my taxes." Exactly. So. Yeah. So Elaine and Nynaeve start into Domin on what they're going to need from him. And Nynaeve just like freely tells him about the Black Aja, possibly yeah. being in Tanchico. So this is what I was talking about. The whole like meeting up with Domin in the first place is entirely coincidental. Yeah. And they're just immediately going into this whole thing. They're like, hey. We need your help. There's Black Aja here. <laughs> yeah. And Elaine thinks that she's being very free with this information. Yeah. Which she is. Oh, Yeah. It's like, how much do we actually trust? Like, we yeah. like we probably trust Domin because we get to see Domin. Yeah. And we've seen him not. He's, yeah, there's still 10%. Yeah, a little skepticalness. 10% likely he's a dark friend. But I mean, <laughs> but they don't know him since that like one time. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. It is kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know. Was there more than that, though, do you think? I don't think that's a question you can ask me. <laughs> <laughs> because Nynaeve met with him before... Sure. Like Elaine and Min showed up. Yeah. So maybe Nynaeve has a better relationship with him. But like how behind good. Behind the scenes. How good is that relationship? Clearly good enough though. Yeah. Because not only does she share this information about the Black Aja. Yeah. When he mentions that maybe he should pack up and go back to Ilian, she's like, oh, well, Samuel the Forsaken is running there. Yeah. So yeah. like you can't you can't hide. You yeah. can't run. Like you gotta do yeah, the right but thing. That's here. also something that you probably shouldn't just be yelling out in the middle of an inn in Tanchico. Oh, I agree. I agree completely. It's kind it's just like a it's a weird take that the girls are doing with Domin who is just and met when you them say by the girls, coincidence. you mean Nynaeve. Yeah. It's Nynaeve alone who is sharing this information. Yeah, well Elaine's here too, so she's not exactly like no. shushing Nynaeve. Well she yeah, fair. But she doesn't like it. No, no. No. So Tom and Julian question Domin. Yes. Yeah. I like the contrast because Julian asks all like the thiefy stuff. About burglars. Yeah. And, yeah. and Tom's like, no, nobles and factions and alliances yeah. is more important <laughs> than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, I get Tom where they come from. immediately is like, Game of Houses. And Sandar's immediately like, catch those thieves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so... <laughs> And then afterwards, then Nynaeve and Elaine get to do their questioning and stuff. So. About, well, they just sort of yeah. give Dom in the descriptions of the Black Aja they're looking for. They don't ask any questions, really. No. They just give information. That's so. right. Freely. Again. Yeah. It's just like, okay. Yeah. So Elaine has still not figured out anything about Tom's past because she's like, why would Tom care about politics and nobles and like... I know. Elaine, you've been on the boat with him for how long? You almost figured it out one time. Got distracted. Got distracted. Yeah. Still hasn't figured it out. I have a theory later, though. I I need to hear that. Yeah. She does. She does. Her inhibitions are down. She's out of her own head. Into your, like, subconscious or whatever it is. Yeah. The question is, is she going to remember all that? No. With the amount of wine that she, that one big cup. Well, to be fair, she's a lightweight. Yeah, no, and I get it. Like, I'm not, 
I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying like she that is a legitimate blackout. thing. She, she legit gets blackout. Blackout drunk and she might not legitimately remember everything. She remembers some stuff. Yeah. But not the specifics necessarily. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. So Julian takes off saying that the night is the best time to fight thieves and Nynaeve goes to their room. She's feeling sick now not being on the ship. Yeah, she's got stomach problems. Yeah. So Elaine goes down to the common room to watch Tom perform and she is sipping wine in an inn like a commoner. Yeah. that's So like, exciting. <laughs> it's like this sheltered Elaine getting to go out on the town for the she's night. She's like, oh my goodness, I've never been able to just sit here and enjoy... Well, With and the I mean, regular people. that's a legitimate thing because if she grew up in the royal palace of Andor, like, no, she's not going to be able to do this. Yeah. Like, I kind of get that. The fact that she loves this so much, but she still always resorts to the, I am Elaine, daughter heir of Andor. How dare you? We do get that like more than once this chapter. Yes. So. She always resorts back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean she can't appreciate a good glass of wine in a dirty common room. Cool. So Tom plays all night. Elaine finds one of his stories familiar, but she still can't figure it out. And then a dreamy serving young man (laughs) keeps refilling her cup. Yeah. Okay. Now, Elaine accidentally gets super wine drunk. Yeah, like blasted. And I'm super here for this. But the only thing that is like the saving grace here with this guy who's like clearly just like getting her plastered yeah i was gonna ask about that like is this just like is there anything nefarious going on here or just serving guy not nefarious but it's yucky like taking advantage it's super creepy because he definitely tries to like get her back to like a room yeah later. to her like and yeah so like definitely not, not good, good but not like dark friend evil no and the first time i read it i didn't focus on that at all and i actually missed the part where he like tries to like advance on her yeah and to be I fair missed that and so i just yeah. thought it was like someone who like thought she was pretty and like giving her free drinks and yeah like just being like kind but on the second and third reread i mean I and just, it's good that it didn't go further than that too and yeah and that she was able to say no yeah and he leaves it at that like that was good that so part's good there's like the scale of evilness it's not evil yeah it's, it's just, just like, like creep, creepy and bad creeper. don't do that don't be a <laughs> creeper yeah yeah okay i will call the cops on you yeah so <laughs> Back to shit face Elaine. Yeah, okay. Because I am here for this. She really doesn't get how drunk she is or that she even is drunk. Or do you think she's just like lying to herself? I don't think she was paying attention. I think she was having too much fun. She was in the moment. And there's like the way Robert Jordan writes the whole like drunkenness scene. I am down for it. I think it's quite accurate for not everybody because everyone's like, like. She stomps her foot and almost falls because the floor yeah. is closer than she thought it was. Or like he writes like it that. pretty good. And it's yeah. like the whole, if you're sitting down at a table, listening to entertainment in a bar, you can have a couple of drinks and not necessarily know. And then, how you, drunk, and then you try up. to stand up and you're like, whoa. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, like yeah. that's a real, real thing. Yeah. So the way he writes that is like, I could see her drinking like maybe six or seven glasses of wine when she's used to one. Yeah. And just like, done done and didn't really notice it and then your ambitions are lower so okay well either way yeah yeah (laughs) elaine makes her way to tom's room yes this is like an interesting thing that this is like the first place she goes like that's what she wants to do it's the subconscious she's been trying to figure it out for like a week and a half in our time got it she she figured it out freaking figures it out so tom opens the door and she grabs his mustache. Yeah. And then a cutely hilarious convo. Yeah. Because she remembers. She does. Now, I think all it took was for her to like get out of her own head. Like she's usually too uptight. She's like classic overthinker. Yep. And a little bit stuck up with like the class system. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. she's like, oh, you're just a gleeman. She's man. like, oh, why would my mother ever sit on your knee? Yeah. Like, that doesn't make sense. You're a glee man. Exactly. Right. And so now all of a sudden it's making sense. Mm-hmm. So Elaine puts it together from the story of how Elaine used to pull his mustache and 
Her mother was also sitting on his knee yeah. and laughing at her, pulling his mustache. Yeah, exactly. And, and things like that. Tom tells her that he was a court bard for Morgays. Right. And oh, she's like, oh, oh, you were the you were lovers. You were gotcha. lovers. Yeah. Got it. And Elaine goes on a drunken tangent about Morgays being the same as Barreling because she'll take any man who comes her way. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. So she was in love with you and then also Gareth, Gareth Brynn and, and now and this Gabriel. new guy. Yeah. So, you that, know, that man Matt says that she makes <laughs> calf eyes at. Uh oh. Yeah, the man or hussy mentality That's of like, right. oh my God. Yeah. And Tom slaps her. Yeah. Not great. Not good. Kind of deserved. I mean, <laughs> Tom doesn't want her talking bad about more gays. No. Plus, don't... she's like super drunk. <laughs> Even more reason not to slap her. Okay, so. <laughs> Slap people. Oh okay, I don't want to get this taken the wrong way. But this is, again, from Elaine's perspective, how hard did he actually slap her, like, knock some sense into her because she's, like, in this drunken rage. It doesn't rage. matter. Not okay. Okay. Don't Shake by it. the shoulders? A little What's better. What's better? Oh, okay. That's better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, like, how about a, hey, don't insult her. Yeah. <laughs> a little strong talking to you. I mean, it's similar to what Nynaeve does next. Oh, so. it's all terrible. <laughs> it's all and bad. great. Yeah. So he doesn't want her insulting Morgays. Tom says that Morgays was a fine woman and Elaine is just too drunk and doesn't understand what's going on and then starts crying. Yeah. And so she's like the sloppy drunk. She is. At and the I mean, bar. if you've never been wine, like for, for me, yeah. different drunks are different things and wine drunk is definitely sloppy. It's sloppy. Yeah. Yeah. Like sloshy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So she's crying. He says that he saw Morgays as more than just power. He saw a woman and that's all anyone really wants. Yeah. And hopefully Elaine's just going to forget any of this ever actually happened. Yeah. Which seems like it does. But what I wanted to point out here is that he says, obviously, Gareth Brynn saw her as a woman and maybe this Gabriel sees it that way too. Yeah. But... How much does Tom know about Gabriel? Like, why is Tom not suspicious of him? He doesn't know him. But he knew about the Komar stuff with Matt. Like, Matt told him all of that. Yeah, but maybe that's just not taking Matt at his word either. Like, who knows how... Or maybe he's just not sharing any of this with drunk Elaine. That's true. That, that's, that's true, too. more accurate... It, like, that's how I think it is. Yeah, like, what is telling her, oh, Gabriel's not to be trusted... What's yeah, that that's gonna not going to accomplish yeah. anything. But I need him. I want to see him be more upset about what's going on with more gays. Okay. Do you want to see like some big rescue scene with <laughs> Tom going back yeah, to save more gays? I do gays? believe like, that he doesn't like actually, he's not in love with her anymore. I do yeah. believe that. Yeah, because he did say that. But I think he still cares about her. Yeah, because he did say like that doesn't go away. Yeah. So I don't know. So yeah questions okay i don't know anyways rant over yep tom gets her back to her room back in the room with Nynaeve. elaine busts in and says rand must think i'm crazy tom is a bard and barreling isn't my mother after all yeah <laughs> and she is sloshy wine drunk and Nynaeve <laughs> is so annoyed yeah she hates this on this night of all nights how could you how could you do this to me yeah <laughs> I got to say, again, I love this so reaction. So she's like, just like... <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. So she's like, hey, hey, Elaine, come on over here and look in this water bucket. There's something I think that you should see. <laughs> it's over here. And Elaine's like, what is it? Yeah, I'll come <laughs> check it out. <laughs> look, it's it's in there. It's in the bucket. And then I need water boards her. <laughs> Basically is what it is. Also, this is what I'm saying. Robert Jordan's writing of yeah. Elaine drunk is so funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because she's like, oh my god, I'm going to drown. Nynaeve's going to drown me. Yeah. Which, <laughs> like, just her thought process yeah. is so back and forth all over the place. It's it's, it's good. Great. Yeah. It's so funny. So, turns out that Nynaeve now needs to go into Teleronrion. Yeah. Because they're going to go look for Egwene. And Elaine was supposed to go tonight. But now she's all drunk and can't. So like, no wonder Nynaeve is pissed oh off. Oh my God. Drunk Elaine in Teleronria. That would be no. bad. If I she can't can even believe, get there. I honestly can't believe 
Nynaeve even goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, this is the thing too. The last because they if saw- she can't leave herself- Yeah. And trusting Elaine to be able to wake her up when she can barely like hold herself up. She so, she throws up everywhere. And that-, that The room okay. is spinning. Three things, three things. One, when Elaine says she threw up for a year, probably hours, but like it felt like a year. It's just a funny take on it. And then second thing, the last time that they saw Egwene- was, was being yanked out yanked of Yanked out, and they've gone every single night since. And they haven't seen her. And they haven't seen her, so that's, like, pretty concerning. It is concerning, but what's more concerning is if Nynaeve can't get herself out of Teleron Riyadh, and yeah. Nynaeve passes out. Yeah. Or, no, Elaine passes out. Yeah, that would also be bad. Oh, and then third thing is the technique of sobering someone up. By doing that, it doesn't actually help. Well, that's never going to work. It's not going to work. No, but... if any, it just made her sick. And then the room is spinning, and now she's like a different kind of, like at least not fun drunk. It might shock her system into something other, other like mentality. Like throwing here, but... up, right? But <laughs> I would rather have like funny, emotional <laughs> Elaine than like sick at, with the spins yeah. Elaine. Oh man, so it's just like, uh, okay. Okay. So we get our perspective change with Nynaeve heading into the dream world. She's in the stone... The heart of the stone. Yeah. I have a question about this. What? What's your question? Should they be constantly coming to the heart of the stone? Like they keep coming back here. Yeah. They've probably re- not because Nynaeve also has a feeling of being watched. Yeah. And then starts calling out for Egwene. It's like, oh, I feel like somebody's watching me. Egwene, Egwene, yeah. hello. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like also this is where like at in the heart of the stone Around Kalendor, that's where the Black Aja was waiting for Egwene that one time. Yeah. Like, is it good to keep returning to the same spot? Let spots? me tell you about these women. <laughs> Are they competent enough to have the Black Aja? <laughs> that's, that is the question. That's the question. Because okay. the answer is probably no. I want it to be yes. I want them to be better at things. But they never do anything... Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's too harsh. It's just everything they do seems so stupid and reckless. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, it does seem stupid and reckless. I mean, if you want to be found, the best way to be found, like, for example, if you're lost in the wilderness, the best way to be found is to stay where you are. Yeah. Because anyone searching for you is going to cover a pattern looking for you. And if you're moving around, you're fucking up the search pattern. Yes. So with these girls, like, if they don't want to be found, they should be moving all over the place. But Flying they... around. E- exactly. No, Fly around Tanchico <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> Make it obvious. Yeah. But, like, they keep coming back to the same place constantly. So if well, anybody looking... ever looks here. Yeah, but that's the meeting spot. Yeah, that's but... where the Starbucks is in the Stone of Tear. That's where they're meeting for True. coffee. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay. All right. And, like, considering Egwene was, like, yanked from here... <laughs> and you're concerned for her? Like, maybe stop showing up there. Maybe. Or like... Like, what could you do anyway? Go there, but like, hide and wait for maybe a Gwen to show up there. Yeah. A like, Gwen! I... A Gwen! <laughs> right? Okay. So... <laughs> anyway, I think we made her point. Yes, I think so too. We get a tip that Nynaeve really sucks at being here. And she thinks that Elaine and Egwene are so much better than her. But Elaine is but not Elaine better. But Elaine is also terrible. So, like, yeah. what is Elaine relaying to Nynaeve? And then also, Egwene is better, but then won't teach the girls anything. Yeah, she's bad. So, okay. So, I think it's really funny that Nynaeve thinks she's had embarrassing moments here before with, like, see-through dresses and thinking of land. Yeah. And I just have an interesting question. Okay. If you do something embarrassing okay. and no one is around to see it, yeah. is it still embarrassing? Yes. Really? Absolutely. I don't agree. It's your mind's perception of what's embarrassing. Yeah, because and- she's like, oh, how embarrassing. And I was like, what? How? No one can see you. Okay, so example, me walking down the sidewalk by myself and then I trip on nothing and almost wipe out or do wipe out and no one sees me, I'm still embarrassed see, that I I'm embarrassed. failed at walking. I'm embarrassed on the sidewalk because someone could have seen from their house window, from a car driving by, from someone could have seen. Like, that's embarrassing. But where some no one can see you. Like, if I fall in my house, I'm not embarrassed. Okay, that's just you then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I for sure... No, other people if definitely... If I for sure know that no one can see me, like, when I'm, like, in my... <laughs> We don't need to go into the embarrassing things uh, that you do. Well, there's like things like 
like when I sneeze and I hit my head on something. Yeah, honk your horn in your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. That's the one. <laughs> like, I don't know. If no one's there with me, it's not embarrassing. That's just you. Other people absolutely do feel embarrassed. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's certainly embarrassed thinking about Lan. So Nynaeve thinks that Egwene is in the waste somewhere in Ruidian. Yep. And, and boom. Boom, she's there. Yep. Like, literally. That's and how she, it works. Yeah, so she sees the city surrounded by fog in the waste. Yeah, she's literally at Ruidian, which is pretty crazy. In but the I dream mean, world, yeah. That's how Teleron Riyadh works. And it's pretty clear now the amount of times we've gotten that. Yes. It's what your brain I wants. I feel like I could be there now. I feel like I know how to do it. Yeah, you just like go there. Yeah. Think about it real hard, boom. Except not even that hard. Just think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, except that she stops because she sees a man down in the valley trying to get through the fog but yeah. keeps like getting stopped short yes because we did hear about ruidian from the wise ones there's some places in teleron riyadh you cannot go and it's ruidian, ruidian is, is one, one of them. them yeah okay so it looks like that fog is doing some sort of barrier stuff okay which kind of makes sense now who is this guy that's what i was gonna ask you yeah, yeah. who is he yeah, who is he? Why don't you just tell me? Well, I'm, I can't do be, that. This will all be over real fast. So some guy walking around the edge. Yeah. Dressed up all, uh, I think in blue, maybe? Yeah, blue. In blue? Okay. Uh, Good. I'm just going to like, I have a dice. I have sure. a die. Yeah. And on like sides are like different things. So it's either like Forsaken. Nice. Um, Hero of the Horn. Okay. <laughs> uh, like i don't know i got this like different and i'm just okay gonna... we can kind of speculate from the next thing that forsaken happens forsaken is on like four of the sides it's like all the sides <laughs> it's it's a forsaken okay <laughs> well let's talk about the next part because yeah. our one and only Birgitta yeah shows, shows up shows up and apparently she's like the savior in Teleronrod of all the people like the girls and Perrin well I wrote in my notes so Brigitte is apparently just finding dream world newbies and helping them yeah so again re recall back to the whole thing with the slayer guy with Perrin around the tower of Genjai oh Brigitte is not even supposed to be talking to anybody the prescripts and she's yeah. like hey I'm not even supposed to be saying nothing she's breaking them but I have to are you Taviran because that's what she said to Perrin yeah but clearly the girls like well, it's just Nynaeve. Yeah. And she's sort of there. She kind of showed herself to Egwene, too. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So. I don't know. But Brigida says really urgently, you got to get out of here. If that one sees you, you're dead or worse. And then she draws her bow and aims it at Nynaeve. So Nynaeve flees somehow. Yeah. And ends up in Emmons Field at the Wine Spring Inn. But she has no time to think about how these guys are doing without her. Yeah. Well, Brigida has followed her to Emmonsfield. Yep. Also, just side note, Nynaeve doesn't think that the guy poking around Ruidian was an Aiel. Like, that didn't fit the description. Ah, okay. Just like as a side note. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we can speculate, but... Okay. Yeah. So, Brigida did follow her because she sees the flash of silver and her ducking behind a house. So, that's when Nynaeve tries to t chase her down. Because she really wants to catch up to Brigida to be like, what the hell? Yeah, except that Nynaeve is like threatening her. You get back here or I'll give you a thump! And it's like... She's Brigida Silverbow. Yeah, Nynaeve. hero of the horn. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. You're Who not do you gonna even do... think you are? Like, you're yeah. so annoying. Get out of here, Nynaeve. <laughs> I'll give you a thump so you'll wish you had an adventure or something. I don't even know. Some dumb. Yeah. And, then... <laughs> and then the best thing happens, because we got to talk about this. Yeah, because around the building, it's not Brigida, but a man in a dark coat heading towards her. And her breath catches because this guy looks just like Lan. Lan, okay. Same shape to his face, same eyes, but then he raises his bow and shoots right at her. Okay. And she has to jump out of the way and wakes herself up out of the dream. Okay, go. Okay. Speculate. Yeah. Let's talk. Okay, so my theory is, well, now she's in like the two rivers and did that Slayer guy have a bow? He did, I think. I guess it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I think he had a bow. Okay, so she's in the two rivers and in the dream world, and we know that Brigida was in the dream world, and so was this slayer. Okay. Around in the two rivers, right? Yeah. So, like, my first inkling is that, like, maybe it's him, but why does he look so much like Lan other than, I don't know. So, there was a thing about when Perrin first saw the slayer guy. It was like an inkling of recognition. Hmm. Which might make sense, because he if he kind of looks like Lan... Yeah. Then Perrin might be like, oh, some sort of recognition kind of looks like Lan. 
but Nynaeve, it would make sense but that like, she's... But, like, why did she, he immediately shoot at her? I don't know. All of it's, it's kind of It's weird. not Lan, that's No, I saying. know that. I okay. know it's not Lan, but it looks like Lan. And I know that, obviously, people who have died get to hang out in the dream world in some capacity. Okay. And so maybe it's, like, Lan's dad. Lan's dad. Yeah, like, some of his, like, Malkier family. Okay. Just hanging out in the dream world. Because they're all dead. They're dead. Yeah. <laughs> but they're hanging out. But why are they attacking They're hanging people? out in Emmons Field so and attacking 90. Here's a question. Do you think that this guy is Slayer? I didn't think that until like now. Okay. Like originally reading this, I thought maybe an ancestor of Lan. Okay. I mean, possible because the recognition, it makes sense in my brain that Nynaeve would think an ancestor of Lan would look more like Lan than Perrin would be like, oh, that's Lan. Yeah. Just because their personal connection. Yeah. Right. But we do know that Slayer was also hanging around Emmons Field. Emmons Field. So. I don't know. Okay. I don't have anything for you. It's so weird. Okay. So then we get a perspective change back to Elaine with Nynaeve waking up screaming. He looked like Lan and he tried to kill me, but she's actually bleeding from the cut on her arm where the arrow like whizzed past her. Yeah, stuff so, in Telluride and Red happens, you know. For real, For real, real, real. So Elaine says that she wishes she knew how to heal, but trying without knowing how could be bad. And I just thought, oh, that's a really good point because last chapter we got the whole healing is so close to killing yeah don't practice medicine if you're not a doctor right because right. i've been preaching this whole time that everyone should just like give it a try yeah try healing who cares that's bad advice yeah i get that now <laughs> i'm correcting myself hey i appreciate that you got there like i didn't want to go out there and be like hey if no. you're not a doctor don't try to do surgery <laughs> yeah unless you're properly trained i don't know if you're in the zombie apocalypse and someone needs their leg cut off Different circumstance. Different circumstance. Sort of. D yeah, there's a little different. If it's <laughs> life or death, and like you're gonna, if they're gonna die anyway, and you're an Aes Sedai and you don't know how to heal. Nynaeve has tis but a flesh wound on her shoulder, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> Not in this scenario. I just mean other scenarios. If there's a worse scenario, then sure, maybe give it a wing. But <laughs> okay, give it a wing. All right. So Nynaeve recounts the story of what happened. And they're not going to go back into the dream world tonight, but they do worry about what happened to Egwene because they're like, oh my God, if someone shot, shot at me and where is she and yeah. why can't we find her? That's good this advice. This is all bad. Don't go back tonight. Don't go back. So they go to bed, but Elaine's got the spins real bad. And in the morning, she is hung the fuck over. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Robert Jordan writing it properly. Because it's like in the morning she, she wished she, she was, was dead. dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I feel that in my soul. Yep. <laughs> and the first time I read it, I was actually listening to this on the audiobook. I went I was going for a walk and Kate reading reading this sentence, it was so funny. I like laughed out loud while I was like walking. But yes. it was so good. <laughs> so good. I love that. Yeah. Laughing to audiobooks. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So okay. Tom joins her in the morning. She's got a crazy headache. She feels terrible. Can I just say wine headaches are also it's the, the sugar. worst. It's the sugar. They're the worst hangovers. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> so Elaine tells Tom his stories were wonderful. Not totally sure how much she actually remembers of it. Though. She remembers like doing something embarrassing in his room. Yeah. Making a fool of herself. But... We don't get more. Yeah. I so, don't think she remembers who he actually is. Okay. So that's still a question mark? Yeah. She's going to have to get drunk again to figure it out again? Yeah. Okay. I don't or know. Or maybe something a little bit is lingering behind? I don't know. Ish. So Nynaeve joins and has a hangover smoothie of gross herbs for her. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, if I trust anyone with a hangover smoothie... It'd be Nynaeve. It's Nynaeve. Or she's just doing the thing where she's like punishing you. I could see that too. Uh, if it was like Egwene. My mom has. Or one of, or if it was like Matt. Yeah. For sure. She would just punish Matt. But, uh, but Elaine, like she needs her. Okay. But I'm just saying my mom has stories about her mom. So like my grandma doing to my mom when she was hung over, her mom would intentionally make stuff that would make my mom sick to like punish her for being hung over. See, that's rude. <laughs> you didn't mean my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I think that maybe if it was like Matt hungover yeah <laughs> Nynaeve would do that for sure 
but she like needs Elaine today. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So Julian didn't sleep in the room last night, but then cue him entering the common room yep. with a bruise under his eye and smiling. He joins them and says he's got some information. Nynaeve scolds him about being reckless and too quick. Yeah, because it does seem like he kind of gets to the point way too fast. Yeah, he's like, all right, I talked to some guys. They've seen Leandrin and some of the Black Aja. Yeah. They're hanging out here. Yeah, we and, got them. And she's like, what? <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> not even 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he says he's he doing says a good he's job. He's just talking. Like, he's not asking questions. And people are biting on the info. And he's going to find the women. Yeah. And I have a side note. Because if he's just talking or just listening why does he have a bruise under his eye well because he's hanging out with a bunch of tough guys oh yeah it's just what it is i don't know yeah tom says he's gonna find them by dabbling in politics wouldn't that be a kicker if he got like the whole mat because he got kind of magic the last time who oh, julian yeah, they like yeah. took him over and she's like oh you gotta come with me and then like led them into a trap it would suck if that happened immediately and again well, yeah, but Julian is actually being very careful because he doesn't want that to happen again. He says earlier in the chapter that he doesn't want to get mixed up with them again. Well, I mean, obviously he doesn't want that to happen again, but I mean, at some level, it's not up to him. Well, he could be sneakier. He could be. It's just I... a question mark of, is that going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And then also the other question is like, who's going to find them first? That's the big one. Mm -hmm. Julian, Tom, or the girls. Yeah. Or if they all have information and can like come up with a plan. No, nope. One of them's got to win. Oh yeah, not working yeah. together. <laughs> or Domin, right? Also, right. he's, he's right, doing right, the right. thing. So Elaine and Nynaeve are gonna go looking too, but Tom and Julian agree that they should stay put in the inn. They will get into too much trouble, and Tom and Julian have been tasked with keeping them safe. Yes. And so Elaine goes to argue, but Nynaeve says, "You're right. We will get." spotted quickly <laughs> and it isn't safe if we're recognized by the black aja so we're gonna go undercover in tanchico yeah so like i kind of get the whole tom and julian want them to be protected because they have to protect the girls under basically threat of death yeah by they, lan and maureen yeah like yeah. they will literally get murdered if they don't protect these girls so like i get them wanting to keep them safe so they're gonna do have to do some like min makeup style oh yeah hair in braids all that stuff silk dresses different personalities that's how you change your look turns yeah. out. <laughs> all right so at the very end of this chapter elaine remembers that if the black azure are here then that means the plan for tanchico was true and there is something here that's able to bind rand with his own power yes and that's bad yeah bad news bears something from the panarch exhibition room or something yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. The yeah. like, I, we, I've the speculated room. the broken, stabby terrain grill. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Or something of the like. Or the giraffe. Right. Probably, actually. Yeah. It's it going to fall on him or something. Ah. Get him there and then like It'll collapse. bind him. It'll yeah. literally <laughs> trap him there. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out, guys. <laughs> okay. So, chapter 40, Hunter of Trollocs. Yes. Or, you know, Trollocs hunt him. Yeah, uh, good one, good one. So we got the Trolloc symbol. In my book, the Trolloc symbol is um, slightly slanted and off-center. Oh, really? Yeah. Is okay. yours? Uh, I mean, it's a little off-center. Here, let me see mine. Yeah, same, same. Yeah. I just thought that was funny. Anyway, so last time with Perrin, he had just rescued the prisoners from the White Cloaks. Yes. Off to hunt Trollocs. Yeah. So... We get that it's been six days since that happened. So we're going to do a recap, basically. Yeah, we got yeah. lots of rain. And he's at the apple trees where his family and all generations of Ibarras have been buried. Yeah, so that is sad. We get that 14 were buried all at once here. That's, oh, it's so that's heartbreaking. That's his whole family. Yeah. And that's all Fane. That's everybody. Yep. Yeah, but that's all Fane. That is all Fane. Yeah, 100%. Fane did, killed 14 people. Yes. How even? God, he's the worst. He is the worst. He's the worst. Gross. Yeah. So, Daniel, Daniel Lewin shows up. Yes, he does. To tell Perrin that the lady is here. I love the titles. Turns out it's Lady Fael. 
who is, came from Emmonsfield with Lord Luke. Yes, so I had to kind of dig into this a little bit more too because we have some like Fael Luke interactions where they're clearly traveling together a little bit. So a little bit, yeah. And there is some more like coming to the defense of from Fael for Lord a Luke. A little so. bit. That's only because Perrin very strongly thinks he's a dark friend, and Fael doesn't Fael think so. Doesn't want to just like. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of lumps into the whole, like, did they know each other before or know of each other? Like, what's the connection? Yeah. Why are they so close? I don't know. I yeah. didn't get it as much this time. No? Okay. No. Even, like, the traveling together and then he wants to take her hand to bring her back? Well, I knew that. I think that's just more to piss Perrin off because he hates Perrin. Yeah, I mean, that's true, too. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Mm. So. Anyway, so we get a million pages of forest and trees description. There's a lot of it. And Perrin has about 50 men in his camp. Which I'm confused about because in literally three minutes, yeah. there's 70 men ready to go. 50 in his camp, and there's probably like 20 out scouting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So his crew's grown significantly, which is good. Yeah. And he's turning people away. It's only like medium good because most of them are not used to spending so much time outside. Yeah. And they all have like colds. Yeah. Well, they're all dirty and they're sick. They don't like it. <laughs> Yeah. They don't like me so dirty and cold. Yeah, especially that Will L scene. Yeah. That pretty boy. Oh, he's not so pretty with yeah. like a swollen red <laughs> nose. Okay, so Perrin notes that Lord Luke's smell stands out among the others. Yeah. Cold and separate, <laughs> almost as if he had nothing in common with the men around him, not even humanity. Yeah, so just like what? shove it in our faces here. What the hell? I don't even know. So do you think this adds to the whole like Perrin doesn't trust Lord Luke thing? A hundred percent. So when Files like doesn't want to jump on the whole he's a dark friend bandwagon, what is it that Perrin's sensing here? It's kind of crazy. It's clearly he's a dark friend. It's so clear to it, me. It's like... But this is the thing. It's, it's kind of like the whole Fane thing where it's like so severe that it's like a normal, should a he normal doesn't dark even friend. smell human. Yeah, like should a normal dark friend be this, you know, extreme? Yeah, I don't know. But my other thing, my other red flag was like, where's Slayer in real life? Is he actually, because there's actually no wolves here, even in the real world. So I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, they. I just have to tell you. Yeah, even no, if that, it makes no sense. Yeah. It's uh, like the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah, no, that's Without the that's like fair. even humanity thing, because the Slayer dude didn't smell human. Yes, okay, fair. That's a that's a very good And so that's like kind comparison. of the first connection I made, but it really doesn't make very much sense. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Okay. So Fail is bringing word here that everyone is in Emmonsfield now. The ones they rescued back at the Wine Spring Inn. And the Aes Sedai, the warders, they're all undercover. Loyal is there and the Aiel are there, all in the village. Yeah. Everyone's like, everyone's there. Yeah. So also Loyal has a message for Perrin that Alana is being super shady and disappearing. And Perrin thinks he can't trust her, but he also probably can't trust Varen. So who does Perrin trust? Fael and his axe. And his bow. And his bow. And my sword. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> good one. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, good there you one. Go. Hey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We also get that the Aiel came with Luke and Fael and they are scouting around the camp. Yeah. So did you have anything extra to say about Alana? It's just she's uh, been super shady, she's disappearing. I mean, like, can we talk about it when we get to the Ivan showing up randomly? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Cause I mean, like, that's connected, clearly. I mean, in a, it definitely in a sense, yeah. It's still like, what's her intention here? So uh, Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure on that. Okay. I just don't think it's sketchy when I said I go off on their own thing. Like, yes, it is super sketchy, but it's not abnormal for I said I to have their own intentions. Yeah. And just like... Go and do it. It's not surprising to me that Alana has disappeared. And it's only disappearing yeah. because she's not telling you, but you're off in the woods. Yeah. And like who she, she doesn't need permission. She doesn't tell Loyal. Yeah. Oh, hey, Loyal, I'm going to go collect some blueberries down at the blueberry <laughs> patch. I'll be back soon. Is that what she's doing? I'll be back soon. Like you yeah. don't need to tell Loyal where you're I going. mean, and we know that there's like the whole white club thing going on and there's the whole Trollic and Fade thing going on. Like there's, there's a reasons. lot of things here that are so yeah. convoluted and confusing that I can't formulate a concrete or like coherent 
yeah explanation there's for like anything. too many plans are going on there's too many yeah things interlocking and it's all bad yeah okay so perrin doesn't trust lord luke which i think is fair Fayo thinks that he's just like super arrogant and condescending but i think that that makes it worse <laughs> Like, I don't trust him more because he's arrogant and condescending. No, well, she's saying he is those things, but he's also done some good stuff. Like, he has helped around the village. He has given out some good advice. Like, he is doing things. But then we got some more damning evidence that he was at five of the farms on the day of or the day before they were attacked. That's true. So Fayil defends Luke, saying he's an arrogant fool in some ways, but he's done some good too. Yeah. So we get some big news, though, because... Literally hundreds and hundreds of people have come from all around the two rivers to join Emmonsfield. Yeah. And the village is preparing to defend itself with Perrin Golden Eyes at the lead. Hey, so this is the thing. Two Rivers is a big place. And he was going to a few farms, but news is spreading pretty quick here, so that's good. And he's like, Perrin Golden Eyes, I hate that name. Yeah. <laughs> does he does he really I don't know, I love it. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I think, I think it's, it's a good name badass this is the best thing about perrin <laughs> is this name he's gonna hate it though because that's his entire mo is anything that's like popular he just hates i know he's like i the love OG it though because it makes him like the first real hero that people can talk about other than rand yeah you know what that's, I mean? true, like, that's true that's true okay our, of our characters that we know like that's a name that will go down yeah you know and fail does talk about that i almost under- like rudolph hey in history <laughs> goes down in history i kind of get it though because it's like perrin grew up in this town he yeah. went away for like a year or two yeah. and then he comes back and then people who he went to high school with are chanting like perrin golden eyes like hunter of trollocs <laughs> yeah so like i kind of get where he's like ah don't do that that's so weird i know but i love it people are embracing it hey you just gotta it's go like with the it best thing about him I like it. Okay, so we get a recap of the past few days because right after freeing the prisoners, they found 32 Trollocs and killed them. Kill them all. But they found pieces of people in the cook pot yeah. and Perrin buries the remains. Yeah, so that kind of just made it real because when they first left after rescuing the prisoners, it was kind of like They were a- all like, whoop! Yeah, Ooh, we're doing that? it. Yeah. And they yeah. go and kill the Trollocs and like, yeah, we're invincible. And then it's like, oh my God, the Trollocs were eating people. Yeah. So Gross. one big mass grave. And then it's like reality hits for these boys. Yeah. Which I just need to point out the whole Perrin Burry's people here, like remnants of people. Yeah. But after the attack later, he like leaves all the dead behind. Well, they have to. They're literally... Being pursued by Trollocs? And injured. Like, everybody's severely injured after that attack. I know, but chapter. it's like people that he knows, and they're just, like, leaving them. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, that's war. Ugh. Yeah, that sucks. God. Yeah. Okay. Well, then later the next day, they find a group of 41 Trollocs and a Fade and kill them all. And they had nearly 32 Reverse Men at that point. But I think that most of the Trollocs were actually killed by Gaul. <laughs> and like probably three were killed by the two rivers possibly okay hey, okay so they have bows yeah like they're good with the bows that's, that's true. a thing that's true we got so that. yeah so we get that rain has washed away most of the scents of trollocs and it's because Varen's storms surprised even her with their strength. She messed up the weather too bad. Yeah. Like whatever it is. Like I, I feel like doing the weather that way would be like changing weather patterns. Yes. It's not like a make it rain kind of thing. It's like yeah. change stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So most of the time they're just avoiding white cloak patrols. Mm-hmm. Which is fair. So Perrin goes to see what Lord Luke is talking about. And he's saying that the village is quite secure now. Lots of people are there to defend it. And he's telling them that they should all go back to Emmonsfield to help defend it. Right. Mm. Okay. But Perrin does not agree. He says, nope, we are hunting Trollocs. There are still people out on farms and he wants to save them. Yeah, he does. That's his entire thing right yeah. now. So. And so Lord Luke says... He doesn't want to spread dissension among your men. Lie. Liar. That's clearly what you're doing here. (laughs) No offense, but (laughs) you can't just say no offense. (laughs) Say something offensive right afterwards. Yep, he can. That's that's what he he does. does. (laughs) So 
some of the men with Perrin want to go back for a bath and a bed to sleep in. Uh Uh-huh. And Luke says that they will have a hero's welcome yes. when they return. Yeah. But Perrin says, anyone who wants to leave can, but yeah, not, none do. None do. And Fael kind of like doesn't like that because it's not very leader-like. You're not supposed to just like dismiss your soldiers and be like, do what you want. But it's a good tactic. I mean, it- Because it, anyone who doesn't want to be there shouldn't be there. Go away. You're going to wreck it for everyone. Yeah. I mean, that's fair too, because these aren't soldiers. These no. are just- Two Rivers boys. Yeah, literal farmers. Yeah. So Lord Luke suggests turning their attentions to the White Cloaks since, you know, they want to hang all these people for being outlaws and stealing prisoners. Okay, why is Lord Luke doing all this stuff? Because he's a dark friend. So, like, is this a legitimate... He hates Perrin, but he's also a dark friend. Is this a legitimate, like, accusation you're making of Lord Luke? Like, you're putting it on the record? And I have... 82% 82% worth of solid <laughs> facts. Facts. Facts and evidence. Okay. That, we're, that I'm going to bring on, up. Facts on facts. Okay. I have a solid, solid theory by the end of this about why he's a dark friend. Okay, I want to hear because- this isn't just floopy. I it's got, been like a little casual, like he's a dark friend, but yes. I got to hear, like if you're going to make an accusation, we got to hear why. I have backup. I Let's have go it. afterwards I have then. it. I have okay. it. So we get- the Aiel, Gaul, Bane, and Chiad coming up. Just the three, not the Just hundreds. Just the three. Well, because the two rivers <laughs> folk think there's hundreds hiding in the forest. Yeah, like still think that. Yeah, whatever makes so, them happy. Yeah. So Gaul reports that there are Trollocs headed this way, like to the south of them, about 30 Trollocs, and Bane and Chiad do a taunt of Gaul for being a stupid, slow stone dog. Again. Again. It's hilarious. Yeah. Gaul thinks that they should wait until the Trollocs are sleeping because the Two Rivers men kind of suck. But Perrin says, nope, we're going to ambush them and we're going to get them now. Yeah, it's like maybe, maybe is a good plan. I think that Gaul had the better plan, but I think that Perrin is wound up in front of Lord Luke. That might be true too. I think he's made a mistake. And I also think it was a big mistake of Gaul's to announce to everybody about there being Trollocs close by and which direction they're headed. And this is point number one with Lord Luke overhearing that Perrin knows the plan of which way the Trollocs are going. Okay. 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 Do you see where I'm going? I see where you're going. Point one being he overhears the plan. Yes. Okay. I don't want to fill in gaps for you, so let's keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear your other points. Yes. So Perrin is just like... Hey, guys, you want to go back to Emmonsfield? He's got some parents' <laughs> ass. Well, he says, hey, Will, you want to go kiss the girls? Okay. Also, this whole Perrin and Will thing, it's like I have to imagine what's happened over the past six days with Will and Perrin. And it's got to be like more of this just like bickering. No, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But Perrin also asked Lord Luke to tag along and show us how it's done. But then he <laughs> goes, nope, got to go to Emmonsfield to help with the defenses Someone to gotta protect that village. Okay, is that point two of your Lord Luke's a dark friend? That he won't come with them? Yeah, he's like, yeah. I have other places to be, yeah. not here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Fael calls out Perrin again on thinking Lord Luke is a dark friend. She doesn't seem to think so. I do, because she's mentioned it twice now. Yeah, okay. What about, okay, what about Lord Luke saying, I hope you guys have good luck today? Is that for or against him being a dark friend? Oh, a uh, for. Wishing them good luck. Yeah, because he knows he's going to go mess it up for them. So they're going to need luck they're to survive. They're going to need luck. Okay. Yeah. That's like point three. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> he's going to go tell that Merdral some intel. Pro tip, don't t- tell Danny good luck. Otherwise, she thinks you're a dark friend. <laughs> yep. That's okay. basically how that goes. Well, when you're a condescending dick, if you're a condescending <laughs> asshole and you're like, yeah, okay, good luck, then of course I hate you. <laughs> That's rude. That's not legitimate. He doesn't actually wish them luck. He knows he's they're going to all die. <laughs> anyway, okay. So that's just my theory, by the way. I like your theory. I like it. Okay. So they all head out. The group has two hours of journey ahead of them. They get to the ambush spot. They get all set up in a very good plan. 
Yeah. In like a big semicircle. They're literally going to catch them on this path. Keep in mind, this is like three pages of description. <laughs> yeah. And it is. It's yeah. so bad. But then they wait. Yeah. An and wait, hour and wait, and wait. or more. And Perrin should be able to smell them way in advance. But he doesn't. Because I don't know. He's sniffing the wrong way. I well, don't know how this happens. Yeah, downwind. Okay. All right. So the birds vanish and the squirrels go silent. And Perrin realizes too late that the Trollocs are behind them. Oh, my God. Instead of ahead of them. Yeah. And then we get a battle sequence with Perrin calling out to all the men, but no one answers. And Perrin takes an arrow to the side immediately. And not just like an arrow. Yeah. This is like a giant spear-sized Trolloc arrow. It's a big one. And it's probably a Bad News Bears arrow. Yeah. Right? Because it's bad guy arrow. Well, and it's also taking an arrow to the side when you don't have a doctor around to remove it. And then you have to fight a battle to not get killed. And he, Yeah, because he like breaks off the haft and leaves the spearhead inside. Yeah. Or whatever. It's like all the things you don't... You, it's like it's all bad. Yeah. Can I just point out that I think this is going to be like a matching wound to Rand's. Oh, I like it. I like it. Because Rand I like it, I like it. has an impossible to heal side wound. Yes. And I think that Perrin might have one now also. Matching side wounds. Cute. It's adorable. Especially if that's like a Thak and R. Yeah, I can see that. Arrowhead. It's the evil of whatever. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I like that a lot. Okay, yeah? taking okay. that a step further, do you think that if Perrin and Rand have matching side wounds... <laughs> should Matt also get a matching side wound? Yes. <laughs> oh, and then like the three to fear from the same village matching wounds. Yeah. So Except cute. Except less cute. Uh, kind of cute. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Okay. That's just what I thought of. No, and... that's good. That's okay. good. There's like <laughs> rationale behind that too. Yeah. Okay. So he goes into like battle frenzy mode, calling for everyone. He calls for Fahil. And then a fade comes out and says, <laughs> your Fahil was delicious. That's awesome. That's good. I, I need like voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> in these audiobooks from you. It's such a weird taunt. It's a, yeah. But like it's a fade. I don't know. I guess they eat people. Something to get Perrin riled up. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Perrin, it doesn't not work. <laughs> Perrin can't really keep up fighting because he's super injured and he's slowing down. He's trying to fight the fade, but like he's seeing death. And then Ivan Evo, slash Yvonne. Yvonne. Yeah. Alana's warder shows up like literally out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Kills the Fade before Perrin gets killed because Alana sent him to find Perrin. Awesome. Weird. Is it? It's weird. Why? I don't know. Like they're literally in the middle of nowhere, two hours from where they were. Yeah. And Ivan was like, you guys are hard to find except I found the tracks of 70 horses. Yeah. But why did Alana send... Ivan, unless because she healed him, right? She healed him when they yeah got to the place. So like I maybe so, yeah. she could like sense that he was going to be in danger. Okay, but like they are far. They are far. So it's like so. Th but that's the thing. Ivan's been traveling probably for quite some time. Alana's doing that thing where she's gone off and disappeared a couple of times. So maybe she's off doing like a side quest or something. But Ivan clearly has been searching for a while. So it's not it, like it's 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 fortuitous timing but it's kind of it's hard to say it just see it's too serendipitous for me yeah it doesn't work for me it makes me squint my eyes at him ah okay go, okay what were you actually doing what were sneaking 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 okay yes exactly yeah well where are you doing then <laughs> it's a little lord of the rings again yeah we're gonna have to switch to lord of the rings lord shots, of the rings shots. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm for it. Except that you We've don't... We've had people ask, except... Yeah. You don't get most of my... We gotta do a the Lord of the Rings The only Lord of the Rings ones I get are the, like, Smeagol and the... I got the your, my axe. That's, like... My sword. My yeah, sword, my, bow, my bow, my axe. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> okay. I got that one. Yeah. Okay. I also get the potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of, there's lots of good ones. That's about it, though. Okay. That's all I got. Anyway... <laughs> So the men finally rally to Perrin. Fael is alive. The Aiel are alive. But Gaul is a little bit injured, a little yeah. bit limping. All the important people are alive. Yeah. There's a lot of fallen men, though. 27 
Two Rivers men are dead from this attack. Yeah. And then he just leaves them. So, but this is the thing. And this is why I was saying, it's like, why did he leave them? Well, they literally have to because they a third of their number are dead and probably the rest of them are at least injured because they were ambushed. Yes. Like this is so bad. And okay. Perrin has like a friggin' side wound. Yeah. That's going to get worse. So they don't have time to bury 30 dead. I know. Unfortunately. Okay. So Gaul says they did not come as we expected. And this is where my Luke theory finalizes okay so like what went wrong yeah what went wrong here because gall is not a terrible tracker yes this is not the fault of gall like what he said was totally what was gonna happen okay he says it in front of luke they pack up their camp yeah luke says he's going back to emmons field so that's point one then point two but instead circles around Goes and meets up with the Trollocs ahead okay. of where they're going to run into them. Which would make sense because they took like an hour longer than they should have to get to where the like the Trollocs, Perrin was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's because they went around Circled so they around. weren't sent so they could attack them from behind. Okay. And it's because Luke gave the heads up yeah. to the Fade that... This is where they're going to be. You're going to be ambushed and I want them to die. So. Gotcha. You come. Okay. And attack them and I want Perrin gone. This was his like, I know how to get Perrin gone and it's manipulate. I love it. I love it. Okay. So here's just, okay. So you're fairly, if not, you're 82% convinced that Luke is a dark friend. Yeah. Is it a dark friend situation where he is working in cahoots with the Trollocs and Fade? Yeah. Where it's like they're a cohesive unit? Or is it more like a Fane situation where it's like they're clearly not on the same side, but Fane has some sort of weird influence I and don't can think make them do stuff? Luke has a weird influence like Fane. Okay. Fane is an is a special entity all special on case. his okay. own. You, you get special, on, yeah. special case. Because I could like see that. I'd say he's a regular dark friend. Okay. And I'd say that for the most part, Fades outrank dark friends. Like we saw that with Jacob Carradine. Yeah, right? absolutely. Fades absolutely. outrank dark friends. Yeah. But I think that if Luke has intel for the Fade, like. Fade's not going to kill him on the spot. He's no. going to be like, yeah. He's, because they're working together. Yeah. Now I can like see that meeting of like Luke going in there being like. Uh, wimpy, I got wimpy. info for you. I got you. info. Don't kill me. Don't eat me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. then he's like, ooh, the great one will, the great lord will be happy with you. Yeah, work. go around and kill Perry and Golden yeah, Eyes. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love that. Okay. Yes. That's a good theory. Because like, I literally can't think of anything else. How did this go so wrong? Because Gaul does not fuck up. Yeah. Like, period. Yeah. No, so, I agree. I agree. Okay. The inside job, for sure. Inside and, job. And I mean, I have to, <laughs> I have to preface all of that with... This is purely speculative theory. You were already against Luke from the beginning. I so, was, 100%. Yeah. This is all my speculative theory. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't want everybody going and thinking, oh, this is for sure what happened, even though it seems pretty hey, I'm likely. pretty sure that your word is final. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> it's canon now. I know. So. It's just like when we get off on tangents and we start talking about something as if it's canon, yeah. but we have no idea yet, Yeah. I need to like make that clarification a little bit. <laughs> Anyway. Okay. So Perrin asks Ivan if he thinks the Trollocs will attack them because there are still some pursuing them. Yes. And he says, maybe not. It depends because the fade was like the driving force. Yeah. And we know, we know Trollocs, Trollocs are, are like lazy. lazy. Yeah. And they don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're lazy and they don't want to like get murdered yeah they don't want to die they want easy targets like yeah they, and there's lazy. no fate yeah. driving them to attack so so if they keep up the illusion of strength by carrying bows at the ready yeah. then the trollocs will likely stay away yeah they march and hold their bows as best they can Perrin is so injured that he has to sit on a horse he's one of the injured guys yeah side wound ivan suggests Finding a farm for the night. Yeah, somewhere to hunker down. For food, fire, wound healing. <laughs> I don't know. Is Alana yeah. going to show up and like heal them? I mean, hopefully. Yeah. But soon, Perrin hears the sounds of music, fiddles, and flutes nearby. And that means people. 
and happy people at that. So what does that and mean? And who are the happiest, flutiest people of them all? The White Cloaks. You got it. Yeah, I figured it out. Now, now it's the Tinkers. It's the Tinkers. It's, it's the Tinkers. Tinkers because yeah. they just packed up. They moved south. Yep. Well, you know what's really funny it's, is... It's rain. It's rain. It's the one that Perrin already knows. Yep. And they wanted Perrin to, like, you know, not be a violent guy. Uh-huh. And now he's going to show up with a freaking arrow wound. Yes. <laughs> and an entirely dead family. So, like, I kind of get why he's still violent. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, super cool. I like that. Hey, I, I'm, I'm you, hyped for this reunion. Are you saying that you're enjoying a Perrin chapter? I enjoyed, like, the last half of it. It counts. It counts. We have her on... <laughs> well, because it's Perrin Golden Eyes. That's true. Perrin Golden like Eyes Bull. is way better than just Perrin. Like, Battle Frenzy Perrin, let's do this. Yeah. Not Wimpy Wimpy, I want to go home, Perrin. Yeah. Okay. Wimpy Boring, let's sit and think about this for five hours before we do anything, Perrin. Let's not have sex with my girlfriend in the forge, Perrin. Oh, boring. It's the worst. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like... I have to say... I would take any chapter that entertains me, that okay. makes me laugh, that makes me speculate, that makes me interested in what's going on, that makes me turn the page fast. It's not predictable. I really didn't think that it was going to go this way. Mm, I really yeah. thought that we were just going to see another of them take down Trollocs. Like they're doing a good job. Huzzah, huzzah. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. what I thought this was going to be. And it was going to be boring and predictable. And it wasn't. And yeah. so that's why I like it. That's why I read books for entertainment, not to be bored. Crazy. Okay. Right? <laughs> Is that not a popular opinion? I don't nope. know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but hey, excited to read on? I am. I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go finish this glass of wine <laughs> and say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Mozime, Moltude, Benjamin, Vince Lewick, Michelle O'Brien, Sarah Wyatt, Jamie Young, Cody Fouts, and Giannis. With music by Audionautics.com. If you're interested in some of our Wheel Weaves merchandise, such as shot glasses, frosty mugs, t-shirts, hats, and more, you can head over to newcreationsbygen.com, and we are located in the groups or collections section. If you're interested in supporting us and helping us to make really great content, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast, and you'll also get access to some really great bonus content like early access to our regular episodes, bonus episodes, unedited video episodes, access to our live recordings, monthly Q&As, and more like stickers and keychains. Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We'd also love for you to join the conversation over at our Discord, and you can find the link to that in our bios on those social medias. We'd love for you to tell a friend about us. Referrals really are the best compliment. We'd love for you to leave a review and subscribe. That really does make a huge difference. Thanks so much again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.